So sorry for the clickbait title. I know it's a clickbait title, but I really had to explain some key points about these bow tiller bolts and how you can adjust them and why you're using them in the wrong way. So let's roll the intro first and then we'll get to the video. So the first way and the most common way that many archers use these bolts wrong is they use them to change the tiller of the bow or change the poundage of the bow when the bow is strung. Now I know everyone's gonna be attacking me in the comments now saying, yes, but the manufacturers say that you can use, that you can do them when the bow's strung, you can change the poundage. It's not an issue, I've done it before loads and I get it. I've seen a lot of people change the poundage with the bow strung and there's not been a problem, but I've also seen people change the poundage with the bow strung and strip the thread in the bow or damage the thread or damage the bushing and it's just not worth it. It's much easier to just quickly de-string the bow and change the poundage. It's super quick to do, just de-string the bow and prevent yourself the agony of stripping the, you know, the inside of the thread out of the riser. The fact is, on an aluminium riser like this, it's an aluminium riser obviously, and it's a stainless steel bolt. When it's under load and you're screwing that bolt through, it's not the stainless steel bolt that's gonna burr and, and cross thread or anything first, it's the riser. And if you cross thread the riser, then you're really, you know, that's a difficult position to be in, that's not great. So yes, you can do it, and 95% of the time it's fine, especially with these aluminium win-win risers, it's really, really good, but I have seen it happen on all types of brands of bow, so just de-string your bow and use it properly. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. So the second thing here is that actually, you might be wondering what I was talking about when I said you use them wrong. So the main thing here is these bolts, what people adjust the poundage with, is they're not actually designed to adjust the poundage. Now hear me out here, but actually these bolts were designed for adjustment of the tiller of your bow. That is what they were designed for. And then over time, people have used them more and more to adjust poundage because it's convenient and you need to adjust your poundage to adapt, you know, to different draw lengths, different limbs you've got, that kind of thing. So that's what they've ended up being for. But the original purpose was for adjusting your tiller. And the reason for that is if you max out these limb bolts, if I screw these all the way in or all the way out, that it's gonna put the limb in not a very efficient position and it's not the best position for the limb, especially when you screw these limbs all the way in and you've bottomed out the limb, it's not a very efficient position and you can also, over time with extended shooting, you can also end up putting the limb in a weak position and basically putting more stress through the limb so it's more likely to have some issues with maybe creaking or maybe eventually cracking or delaminating. I'm not saying this happens very often, particularly with the amazing quality control on these limbs that I really, really like, but I've seen it happen with limbs and it does happen, especially when the limb bolts are dialed all the way in. So it's not what you wanna do. Now I know this isn't feasible for a lot of people and you know you can't simply just keep the bolts in one position and buy new limbs all the time because that's stupidly expensive and you need to be able to adjust it. But what I'm saying here is if you have the choice, then set the limb bolts in the correct position, which I'll show you in a minute, and get the correct weight limbs for this, rather than setting the bolts in the wrong position, but you just, you're not you know, aware of it, you haven't been told about this, and then you buy limbs that basically get your draw weight with the bolt in the wrong position. So this is why I wanted to cover this, I wanted to show you the correct position, and then help you pick the right limb for this position as well. So I'll show you that now. So basically what you want, and the reason you want the limb bolts in a specific position is so that you can get a nice efficient curve of the limb through the bow in a continual arc. So as you see here, as you watch the limb here, the limb in, enters the bow nicely and there's a nice curve through the riser and then from the other side, there's a nice curve out and it's in one continuous curve and the limbs are very efficient and basically encourage you to shoot well in terms of they're much more efficient, they sound better, and they're working much better in your bow. So this is a really, really important point, and you can see 
in this picture here of good limb position, you can see this curve I was talking about. The curve goes all the way through the riser in one continuous unbroken line and that is a good position of the limb bolts. Now if you compare that to this picture of limb bolts too far in, you'll see that the curve is broken. The limb bolts are really far in and the limbs enter the bow at a jagged angle and on the other side is the same with the exit and you can see that the curve is broken, it's not one continuous curve. Likewise, if you then look at this picture of limb bolts too far out, you'll see exactly the opposite. The position is not good and the, the curve is broken but in the opposite direction. So these are examples of bad limb positioning and these positions are not as efficient and they're also more likely to make you forget to hit that like button. So just get that, yeah. So make sure you get that like button, but also make sure that you get the limb bolts in the right position if you can and choose the correct limb for you. So for example, if you've got a certain limb in your bow now, but your limb bolts you know are too far in and you're coming into the market for a new pair of limbs soon, you wanna buy a new pair of limbs, Super simple, what you can do is, you know, you measure the poundage you've got now, you put the limb bolts in the position you want, you measure the poundage, and then, for instance, if you want 38 pounds and you've got 34 pound limbs, when you put the limb bolts in the right position, these 34 pound limbs come out at 36 pounds, then you know that you want two pounds extra, so instead of 34 pound limbs, you buy 36 pound limbs. And just by doing the limb bolt position first, it's great because it then lets you get the correct limbs and it doesn't mean you can never adjust your limb bolt position. It, never, it doesn't mean you can't move the poundage by the, using this method, but it just means that you've got your optimum and if you have to vary from that, you can, but you know where the optimum is if you have the option. So this is the difference. I'm not saying never use the limb bolts because many people do need to use them and they're super useful, especially if you're growing a lot, especially if you're a new archer, Who's learning technique because your draw length will change a lot, your poundage will change a lot, and it would just be ruinously expensive to buy new limbs all the time every time you change something. So they are there and they're good for that. But as you become more experienced, especially intermediate, you know, national level archers who are going to national competitions, they know what poundage they shoot, they know what arrows they shoot, they're pretty consistent with their equipment. It's worth investing the time to get the limb bolt position correct, get the correct limbs for this and then get a really efficient setup because it makes it more forgiving, makes it more efficient, sounds better, and then it also makes a more forgiving tune. So it's much better to do this. Now, while we're here, let's mention how different manufacturers measure their poundage. So this is quite a common question that I've had a lot of people ask as well when it comes to win-win versus Hoyt, how they measure the poundage. So they both measure the poundage at 28 inches, so that's the same. The difference here is that Win and Win measure the poundage with the limb bolt in the minimum position, so fully turned out at the minimum setting. So compare this to Hoyt, Hoyt measure it at 28 inches also, but they measure it with the limb bolt in the mid position. So you've got, I don't know how many turns, but say you've got two and a half turns out, two and a half turns in, whereas with the Win and Win, you've got five turns in. So this means inherently, a 36 pound win-win limb will be slightly heavier than a 36 pound Hoyt limb because they're measured at the minimum versus measuring in the middle. And it's just a different convention for the different manufacturers. It doesn't really matter, but it's just being aware. So if you're you know, changing limbs or if you borrow someone else's Hoyt limbs and you measure them up to find what poundages they are, and then you're buying win and win limbs, then you know that, okay, you might need slightly lighter poundage because of this you know, difference in the way that manufacturers measure the poundage here. So it's really important to kind of bear that in mind and use that. So they both do measure at 28 inches, but it's just different position of the limb bolts that they, they measure at. So that's that. So that's been an explanation of how you can use these limb bolts better and how you can use them to set up your bow in a more efficient way and get the correct poundage limbs and basically make sure that the life of your bow and the life of your limbs is better by unstringing your bow and putting them in a, in a neutral position with a nice curve. So I hope you found that video useful. As always, be sure to demolish that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you're new here or you haven't subscribed already. 
As always, I'll put the links to social media down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.